Hello and welcome, RC Jimmy in the hangar. Today I will talk about the K1 printer from Creality that I got a few weeks ago. In my initial review video about this printer, I used it in the default settings, stock firmware that it's got on, with their slicer and their filament and their recommended speed settings, and it worked quite nice. But as this thing has quite a lot of potential and there are a ton of videos out there showing you how to unleash this thing, meaning you can use the clipper firmware on this and have advanced features, of course I wanted to try these out and found a few really cool tricks and tips which I wanted to share with you. Once again, this was sponsored by Geek Buying. Check out the link in the description. It is still a fabulous price. It's a good competitor to the Bamboo Lab printers, which are more expensive. If I'm too fast in this video, I just had a coffee. <laughs> I will also have all the information in written form down below in the description. So I'm always happy to get your direct feedback. How did you like my video? Maybe you have the K1, let me know in the comments. Uh, I like this community aspect of my videos where I can chat with my viewers. That all being said, let's dive into the details that I found for you. Tip number one, I think I showed it in my initial review. Someone created these 270 degree hinges and check this out. You can open up the door all the way to the back and not have the door in the way if you had something on the printer. It has been a bit complicated to get this printer to work in PETG. PLA would also work because it's not a lot of force and my first print just stuck together too much because this is a print in place hinge. But other than this, if you have the right amount of screws, this works flawlessly and yeah, it's definitely a recommended improvement. Improvement two, I went up to a 0.6 millimeter nozzle, mainly because I wanted to try out such a wood composite filament and I heard that on 04 millimeter nozzles you can get it to clog quite easily, so it will be a gem because of the particles and stuff. So I swapped out the nozzle. Creality really has a good guide on what to do, like heat up, unscrew it, take off the silicone by whatsoever. Check out their video. I stuck with the 0.6 millimeter nozzle because I don't print fine details or decorative objects a lot. Functional prints that should have a lot of strengths. So strengths is my main concern on functional parts. And also speed, of course. Of course, this is not theft proof. So if somebody wants to break in your door, don't use plastic things, but for your garden shed, maybe it works. And with a larger diameter nozzle, you can have thicker layer height. More layer height means you have better bonding between the layers. The investment, $29. It's not on the cheap side, but yeah, brass and hardened steel nozzles. Hardened steel nozzles, they are maybe important for the carbon filament that I also have. Those nozzles are harder, so they will not be damaged by particles so easy, but they transfer heat not as good as brass. You just need to add 10 degrees more. I also read the tip to use arachne mode on your slicer. It's a default setting on the orca slicer, which I use. I can highly recommend you using the orca slicer. This makes sure that fine details don't get lost if you use larger layer heights. 0.34 millimeters of layer height and 066 millimeters line width, which works quite well for functional parts. In this part of the video, I often like to point out and focus on my patrons. You are awesome, guys. Thanks for your support. I thought about printing out a tray, but it's a large print size and it's also totally unnecessary. Don't print everything because you can also use some foam board boxes. Yeah, and maybe the main improvements that this printer got were on the software side. The printer's hardware top-notch, all works great, but the software is crappy. Of course, over the time they improved a lot on their normal firmware, but still, like their mobile app is crappy. It's so overloaded with uh, ads uh, and it's slow. It's really just an HTML uh, browser for their cloud application. Yeah, it, it's not nice to use. Installing Clipper, and then you can decide between Fluid or Mainsail as the web UI. And for main sale, I then found Mobile Raker in combination with Octo Everywhere. Uh, so let's let's check this out on the laptop to see what I talk about. But I will just turn on my printer. 
Uh, it's totally handy. If you have these little Wi-Fi sockets that you can turn on with your phone, you can turn on and off the printer. And it also lets you monitor the power consumption of your printer. So the boot times are not terrible. I'd say a minute or something like this. If you install the Clipper firmware, you still have the same functionality here. It's still a bit limited in terms of what you can do here, but also extrude retract if you change the filament. This works quite nice. How to get Clipper firmware running on your K1 printer. Try to make the automatic update to the latest firmware and see if you have this root access. Root access really just gives you the account password, the username is root and the password is creality underscore 2023. You need to have this option in your settings for the correct firmware to be running. Okay, only after downloading it from the website, throwing it on the USB stick, you get this new version is found. So I try it this way and hit upgrade. And now I get 1321, which has the root access mode. And it's not too complicated. You don't need to be a computer geek to, to manage this. If you follow the steps in these tutorials, it's, it's quite easy. You then use something like Putty, a client to connect to the IP address of your printer and use a few Linux commands there to install a little helper script. Just follow this link here. And then you have a menu where you can just run through a few options and will do everything for you. I had to install Moonraker and then Mainzail and you needed to use Antware, KAMP and Cam Control is optional of course. Little note here, the Mainzail, so the advanced web interface will have your print IP and 4409 as a port. In my case, this is my internal IP, you see, dot seven four double point forty four zero nine. This is now the way more advanced interface. With just the IP address, you still reach the stock Creality web user interface, which is totally fine. But if you ever used Fluid or Mainzail, uh, these advanced web interfaces, you can customize them more. You can run a lot of macros. Go to the console and type commands directly there. And in the machine the configuration, yeah, you can directly modify settings on your printer. For the results of your input shaper, for example, you see what it actually wrote there. The webcam here looks a bit weird, but bear in mind that behind this glass, this glass is like dark glass, so that's why the colors look so off. But the angle is correct if the build plate drives up to, to print the print process you see very very nice and fluid <laughs> what what the printer does so that's really good addition to the, to this printer it was quite an easy installation but only after i took away the side plastic once i installed the main sail my webcam didn't work bear in mind that you have to switch these numbers to your correct ip address this, however, should be the same. Under these gear icons and under webcams, add and edit it. URL stream and URL snapshot, adaptive, MJPEG, streamer. You've also seen that you can really change a lot of settings of the user interface there. If we want to try out mobile raker, this is a more advanced mobile phone solution. And there are a few commands that you need to run on the SSH connection to have your printer work with the app correctly. You could also just use your browser and browse to the internal IP of your printer to have the mainzail interface, which looks pretty similar to this. With his program, you have a few more options that you can do. I only used like the webcam and see the, the temperatures and maybe stop it in an emergency. If you want to see this from outside of your LAN, then you will not be able to access it normally. In that case, you need to set up your printer with Octo Everywhere. Uh, configure remote connection. It was not totally self-explanatory. You see, I also had to type in the 4409 port and to the Octo Everywhere. I think the standard features would, would work on the free version as well. It was pretty easy to set up my printer here. 
One nice side effect of installing Mobile Raker and the Octo Everywhere add-on is that you also get mail notifications on your phone or on your computer when a print finished or also if it detects a possible print issue. I printed the wood filament and I had the nozzle clocked or something like this. Here you also see the terrible kind of stringing I had with this wood filament. The nice side effect is also that you get a good collection of pictures of your prints. And last but not least, maybe it's already fixed in newer firmwares, but in their older firmware the input shaper wasn't correctly set. My old values after the input shaper calibration, it had the same value on both axes, on Y and on X. And on the next run the Y axis had still around 50 Hz, but the X axis had almost double the value. It needs to be something different, that's, that's the main thing. And also, while you do this input shaping, it also tells you I shouldn't have higher acceleration speeds than 8800 millimeters second squared. So you can note this and use your slicer settings according to this to get optimal results. Here you see the Ender 3 still produces some quite decent benches in around 45 minutes. So you see a bit more steps and not as nice of a hull. And this is in like only 20 minutes of printing time with normal speeds, not with the super fast setting speed. This wooden pallet, I liked the object. I just wanted to print something in wood. It smells like wood, like burnt wood, but uh, it has a lot of a lot of a lot of stringing going on. I mean this is also like a rugged surface yeah, and I even printed a bench in the wood filament with a 06 nozzle. It's not bad but you see I had a lot of stringing. I reduced stringing effects by a heat gun. <laughs> That's my wood experience. Let's inspect this PETG door lock. A second. It's a printing place thing, so this whole bolt. I just had to remove the supports or the raft. Right, it turned out quite nice. Okay, thanks a lot for watching. That was my tips and tricks video to the K1 printer. If I was too fast in the clipper installation section, I didn't want to repeat what so many videos already tried to explain how to get Clipper running on this and maybe with the new firmwares it's even easier now. If you follow these links and still don't get it to run, yeah, just leave me a comment and I will be happy to help you. It's really worth the little effort and you get a lot more features than you already had when buying this printer, which is a nice thing. Okay, thanks a lot for watching. See you next time. Bye for now. If you haven't seen my review of this printer, the initial review, check out. The link is over here. One of my next videos will again be 3D printer related. I very much appreciate you watching my videos. Uh, if more guys watch my 3D printer videos, this will be a recurring segment in my hangar.